Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. welcome back, and today we're breaking down another map. We're going to be discussing spawn, strategy, line of sight, angles, choke points, map navigation, dominant positions, and more. I'm going to break down things like opening scenarios from spawn, the routes you can take, what your objective should be, and we'll fully break down the basics to more advanced things. This isn't set in stone, some of the things I'll be discussing aren't the only way, because when you play its live game action, things are going to change, but the series is to learn more about the map and some strategy for navigation. The second map that we're going to be talking about is Javelin 4. For a lot of this, it's going to be in a controlled setting in a custom match, that way we can talk about it. There will be some gameplay every now and again, or to show the examples. Let's start off in the main areas, the spawns, with spawn weight, choke points, and some of the power positions. Put names to some areas and start going through our starting strategies. When we talk about spawns, we keep control in mind, and that isn't because the actual game mode is because we can easily reference the starting spawn areas. No matter what game mode you're going to play, we're going to reference C side, A side, and the B area. The starting spawns and the spawns in general for Javelin 4 are one of the most heavily weighted spawns in all of Destiny 2. Meaning that you're going to be spawning in a certain area more often than not 9 out of 10 times. Let's first take a look at the A spawn at Fuel. This is going to be the dominant side for Javelin 4 and we'll talk about why that is throughout this entire map breakdown. The spawn, all of this area is the primary spawn, all in this room. The secondary spawn is to the left, up in glass. It's very, very close, but 9 out of 10 times, this is your area. You do get some neutral spawns depending on where the enemy is, sometimes up at B flag, other times out at deck, and we'll talk about deck in a little bit. For C spawn, you spawn out at the pad. This is C spawn's home, very, very heavy weight on the pad. Secondary spawns go to the right in the generator area. That wraps all the way around to the stairs leading up to the inner ring to B flag. Before we get into the main choke points and some areas of interest, let's talk about why A and B are favored more than C and B. I want to state again how heavy these spawns are. You pretty much spawn here no matter what. Let's first take a look in fuel. In here, you have cover. In this room, you have three routes that you can take from your spawn. Not only are you enclosed in a building type area, you also have walls and structures outside of it, so you have a lot of cover inside. You have some options to try to break a spawn trap. You can start swarming anything that comes into that room. Take this example right here. I decide to go into the room, shotgun a player that's right in front of me, and then another one immediately spawns. I end up getting the shotgun on them as well. But immediately after I get that kill, I look at glass, because I know that's where I should be looking, and there it is, another one spawning, but they happen to be AFK. I get some shots off, but then I immediately start taking some shots on my back. That player spawned by the rock wall. So as I take some shots, I get into cover, I try to buy some time using my vertical space, I start seeing more red dots. And ultimately, when it popped in the super, this is usually ideal. But as I'm going in with the super, I have three opponents in here right now. They get me to low health, and if we stop and look, our team is taking B flag as all this is going on. That means the only logical place that they're going to spawn is right here. And this is your game sense coming into play. The only other spot that they can spawn would possibly be out at deck. The two that are shooting at me in front I end up getting, but I turn around, another one immediately spawned, and is in here, and as my super runs out, I'm trying to get away, one literally spawns right in front of me. They're everywhere. The game will spawn you above anything else right in this room from this side. And if you're in here and the enemy's giving you trouble, you have a lot of ways to outnumber them and outmaneuver them. You have the cover, you don't have to worry about anything real crazy, and when you do, it's this scenario I'm showing from this point of view. Someone's in here with a super, or they just simply ran into the spawn when they shouldn't have. But when you flip over to Seaside and you spawn out at pad, you are helpless. Again, the game's gonna keep spawning you in this area, up to generator, but the primary spawn is on pad. The entire section is full of hot spawns. As we've talked about, yes, this is about the actual location from the point of view, but importantly, this is where you should be looking as an opponent looking into the area moving into these areas and around them. These are the spots to look at, so let's take this example. I'm coming from A side, I pop my golden gun, and there's a lot out here at deck. Some may have spawned here, but with the golden gun, I end up taking out five of them. And as I'm approaching the pad, let's slow this down a little bit. Again, talking about your game sense, just kind of knowing through repetition of what's going to happen next. I know that the pad is the next place I need to go. It's the next place I need to look. As soon as I jump up and hug this corner and start angling my reticle into the pad, look through the opening right here. We have an enemy spawning at the generator spawn. From the pad, we see an enemy coming right at me. After we get them, we immediately look onto the pad and there they are. There's two of them spawning right up, right on cue. The last shot goes off and I end up getting the seventh column. C spawn leaves you out in the open, it gives you zero cover, it gives you no real routes to get out of a spawn trap. Even when you're inside the generator area, when you're looking to the right and going towards B, the enemies have a little high ground on you. 
Not to mention, if you go to the middle stairs, that's where heavy spawns in center. They can grab it, they're literally five meters away to blast that spawn with a wordcliff coil. When you play Javelin 4 and you spawn on the seaside, do everything that you can to flip it. And we'll discuss that throughout this map breakdown. Everything that you can do from A-side is just simply way better. Javelin 4 is a circular map. Aside from the two main spawn areas, the map, for the most part, is symmetrical. There's a part of me that wishes this map was 100% symmetrical, and the entire seaside was replaced with how A-side looks. Let's go on to B, that's going to be a power position, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Your main choke points and areas of engagement are going to be the outside lane battling over center from deck and pad. The center of the map from A-side outer ring to C-side outer ring. This is the area battling over heavy and map control. And then finally, the lane from B-side. This is the inner ring A and the inner ring C. And then of course, all the other lanes and angles that you come across where engagements happen. All the engagements around the rocket, other engagements involving fighting out of your spawn, such as the rocket looking into the C-spawn generator area, or from that area looking into pipes in the rock wall. Let's start off with the A starting strategy. The starting strategies kind of bleed into the overall power positions and angles, and we talk about the full map as we get into the area. I kind of talk about them all at once. You have a lot more options from this side, as we started with. There's a lot more map subtleties from this side. So at the spawn, you have your middle door, left going to B, right going to outside lane, going to deck. First of all, if enemies are pushing you at this spawn, and you go to the right, you can use these stairs and keep your head kind of small, your hitbox small, little head glitch area. But otherwise, if you're just on a starting spawn or mid game and you go on this outside lane, more than likely you want to have a range loadout, be a pulse or a sniper rifle. But if you go here, you're deciding to kind of hang out right here. You're going to be the support player. You can use this cover to your right to go in and out, helping your team push up to these boxes in the deck area. When you get a pick or your team kind of gets some traction and they all push up, that's when you do it. You follow right behind them with your support. If you're running more of a short range loadout or something like a hand cannon, fusion hand cannon shotgun, this goes for at any time during the game. What you want to do is go through the mid door, jump over the box and hug this wall tightly. This is denying that entire angle on the left side from the stairs from center. And on this wall, there's a little grass patch that kind of elevates you. It's a little dirt mound. From this little hill, it allows you to see over the three boxes, get an angle on the players coming around the corner from deck. When they come around that corner, you're in a very weird spot. And what they will naturally do is keep rounding that corner to try to get an angle on you. But when they do that, that leaves them open in that lane for your team. But the whole point, every time coming from A is to secure the deck area. You secure that deck area, you put them in a trap on C, plain and simple. But back to right here, here's what's really cool about this area. It could be again from the spawn or even mid game. Remember when I said that this side simply has a lot more to work with? This is one of those areas. From right here, you can just slam yourself right into this wall. From right here, you can peek and three things are gonna happen. Number one, you can try to win the duel with that player coming around the corner. Number two, a really short distance, you knee slide into the boxes for cover. That way you can work on the left side and right side of the boxes, and if it all fails, you can come right back to that corner. It's a very heavy area, so more often than not, you're gonna have teammates with you kind of helping out the situation. But number three is that when people rush you, you can jump up and try to bait the area. And what's odd is that there's these leaves, this old looking moss. You can do a short hop, you can kind of get up in there, and it's kind of tough to see you. Maybe you can use your vertical space, use your shotgun from the air, and bait them in. But when you're right here, the whole point is you're denying the left angle stairs. We'll get into the seaside in a, in a moment, but even mid game, you can do a short little hop, immediately hug that wall, do a little check over people coming around the corner, get in this area, then make your read. When you're here and your team takes deck, you move up to center stairs. This is gonna be the area that you're gonna hold. You don't wanna go any further unless you have a super, or if you have heavy, because they're gonna keep coming at you. At this point, you've basically spawned trap C. That's just how the map works coming back to the A spawn, but this time going through that middle door, but let's go left this time. One of my favorite things to do at the start of the game and mid game is to run right into this little cutout of the rocket. You jump into it, you knee slide into it. When you're here, you have a lot of control. Your radar is gonna ping and tell you if players are gonna be going to B. It's gonna ping when players are in that mid area where heavy ammo is. Then you can start making your reads, make your decision on what you wanna do. When you're here, when you peek B, you can do it with a sharp angle, but importantly, you deny everything from the center. That's the important thing. If you weren't right here and you just lay in the angle as soon as you get and see it, you're out here in the open and you have easy shots coming at you from center. We don't want that. And that's just from that angle, but you can also say you see a ping on your radar, you can peek into heavy. All of it depends on where that radar ping is. But if you want to look in that heavy area, you can actually crouch and look under the thruster from the rocket to get an angle onto it. If you take shots, you just back out and get into the safe area. Another 
cool thing about a side just simply being better is going to be this this is a big one whether you move to the middle platform from right here or at any given time at mid game from this side there's a small crack and it sees the dominant areas to see you can see the stairs from generator and their jump up it's very important to know and utilize when you look through this angle in this crack and you're getting your information know that you cannot be shot and they cannot shoot you this is easy information to get now there's also a dirt mound behind you you can actually back up a little bit and get in a little head glitch i don't use this but you can but from right here you already know that they're there they've pinged the radar you can use this little crack to see the actual location so you know what to do then you start making your decisions and also if you go to the other side of this middle platform you can see their diamond and each side has a diamond there's c side diamond and a side diamond but when you're ready you can jump up to the platform and this brings us to the platform itself please 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 from both sides jump on the inner part and i'll explain why when you jump from the a side your first check is their diamond but you then look down into the stairs from their spawn this is where a lot of players hang out and you can also go a little bit wider and see their jump up if you take fire all you do is back down get into cover this is opposed to jumping wide on the outside of this platform because when you jump wide on the outside you get right into the line of sight of all three of these areas it's a very bad look and let's flip it real quick even from the seaside, if you jump up on this wide part, it looks directly into the spawn stairs. A lot of people might be looking up there already, you're kind of helpless. It's a very heavy traffic area for A. They're going to get the jump on you before you get the jump on them. Now that's opposed to using that inner part. It denies a lot of those angles. And from here, when you're actually on the platform, then you start rounding the corner. The whole point is to protect yourself. The jump up is a very dominant position. You can do a lot from right here. The first step though is using that inner side to protect yourself. Once on that platform, start rounding for angles and you go from there. And the last route from a spawn is going to be to the left. And just like the other side, if they're trying to spawn trap you, you have this little head glitch area. You can kind of break free. The side is just so much better. The inner circle area is very tight, very close corridors, lots of grenades. If you choose to go in there from this side, if you want to, there is a jump up box. And what's nice about this box is that you get the angle into B and for your enemies to shoot at you, it's a very long distance travel for the reticle. They need to look up and to the left, and this leaves them wide open from other angles on your side for your team to get them. Main theme again, if you take shots, you just back down, back out. But taking this area is always playing position. Grenades, you win your duels, very straightforward area. When you get to B though, the platform is a dominant position. And one of my favorite things to do is immediately jump into it and use the wall from either side as cover. You have a lot of access right here. And the first thing to know if it's control, you can actually cap the zone from up here. And when you do, you're safe from both sides of the inner circle. The only thing you worry about is directly in front of you. If you start taking some shots, you just back down into the zone. But when you're up here, they know that you're capping. Nine out of 10 times, they actually think that you're down below inside the zone and not where you are, because they can't see you. So you just use that corner, get an angle on them. That goes for both sides. If they throw a grenade up in there, again, your escape routes are gonna be straight in front of you or behind you. But even mid game, you can make a lot of reads from right here. It's one of my favorite positions on the map. If it's control and your team holds the B zone, enemies are gonna be constantly coming at you. You can get a lot of opponents defeated from up here. But while we're right here from B, if you're looking into the C area on the left side, you can use this box as cover to peek shoot their jump up. But if you actually want to look at their stairs, jump on the box to look down into the stairs and kind of go up and down with this box and again round and get your angles. But if you're looking in the A area on the right side, you have a very sharp angle from right here into the rockway and pipes. And also anyone using this inside wall is cover from mid lane. Very, very good area. And that's gonna be, for the most part, your A routes. Lots of good angles, lots of good cover. Let's go ahead and flip over to C. We have three options. We have left to deck, we have the middle area to heavy, and then right to B. I recommend that when you spawn in, immediately get the ball rolling. You need to go to B, take it, and then try to take A. Flip those spawns. Even if it's clash, you're kind of doing the same thing. You're using that right outside lane to go into A to try to take the spawn. You need to take the spawn. Now, since the spawn is so heavy, in a rare case, let's actually talk about you know, defense for a second. A lot of times when I spawn on the pad itself, I go right to these kegs right here. I'll knee slide right into them off the spawn. Just because more often than not, there's already someone looking at me. But from right here, you take away a lot of angles on you. And sometimes I actually jump up on the keg and look up in the mid. And when you do that, there's cover on the left side of you that blocks all angles to the left. So you're specifically looking into middle heavy. And as an opponent, you don't really expect players right there. 
And from the spawn, say you spawn a little bit back in generators and you get a lot of heat from this side. One of the things I like to do is jump up on this box. That way you can look down over into stairs and also see on other side with players trying to rush in. And both of these areas have auto cover, meaning that when you're crouched and you aim down sights, it automatically pops out. And generally when you're spawn trapped here, you want to at least get a couple picks. That way you can at least advance. But if not, one of the safest things you can do is actually just spawn in, even at pad, immediately hang a right, go inside the corridor that kind of elbows around into the stairs. And you can kind of make your decisions from there. But back to the spawn, let's start with the B lane, right where we are. The same goes as the other side. It's symmetrical. Use your grenades wisely. Try to win your duels. If you don't see any pings on your radar from mid, you can jump right onto that platform. One of the best positions on the map. Again, the area is very cut and dry, but let's go back into the generator area to, to the stairs from this side. This is going to be a good defensive position, nothing more really. Since you get a lot of heat at sea, I like to make myself small, use these stairs kind of as a head glitch. Try to get a pick and move up. You always want to move up. From right here, the move is to either go to B flag or use that middle platform. Initially, if there's a lot of enemies, you want to go to the wide side. You just knee slide right into it, get into the corner. When you do that, that keeps you safe from mid. It denies that angle. You're using this little area that has that crack. And of course, from this side, it's not as good. But regardless, it does keep you safe from both sides. From there, you can start making your reads. You can peek into B flag. You can look into the middle area with heavy, or you can use the inside jump up to start gaining your position. And as always, from both sides of this platform, always pay attention to the heavy, heavy traffic that you get in the center area with the pillar that has heavy ammo spawn on it. This map's all about gaining position, and if you don't, the position will get gained on you, and it's just gonna snowball. Next up, let's do the middle lane. One of the only good spots from C. The stairs is one of the best spots from the side. You have a lot of control. You can back out down the stairs. You can use it as a head glitch. You can then transition into the center and start doing your work with that center pillar as your cover. It's fairly simple. Then you start making your reads go into B or into their spawn with the main goal of trying to flip it. The last left lane is to go out to the deck area. If I don't immediately try to go to B, like say I'm just solo queuing quick play, I do prefer going left. And when you do that, you have a goal in mind. Especially at the start of the game, if you decide to go here, there's three things to pay attention to. Number one, if you have a range loadout like a sniper or a pulse, you can get really good angles from right here into their HO point. But number two, if you're rushing, you need to turn this corner sharply with the knee slide into the three boxes for cover because it takes away all the angles from the other side. You gain position fairly effortlessly from right here. And when you're right here at these boxes, these three boxes, you have a couple options. You can peek left and right using the boxes cover, getting different angles, or you can go to the left outside and get an angle directly into the spawn stairs. You can put in a lot of good work from right here. And hopefully when you're pushed up, ideally you're gonna have a supporting cast with you. And this goes for both sides when you're trying to take the deck area. It's a lot better having teammates around. And that's gonna be the seaside. Everything else kind of bleeds together. I talked about the map flow. And as you can see, there's way more upside to A, and if you played the map, you should know that as well. But the main thing about Javelin, wherever you are, it has very sharp angles to it. I'm walking around the map and kind of showing off. There's a lot of boxes, there's a lot of sharp corners. It's very tactical if you play it like that. Just be aware of your enemy pings and your surroundings. There's cover everywhere, and always be next to cover. We've always talked about this. It's because when you're next to cover, there's more opportunities to make plays, to make reads, to get in or out of situations. If you're new to the channel, remember to hit the subscribe button. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. We had a great stream on Sunday over on Twitch. There's a link below. Fallout and I dropped one game in seven hours. We played really well together. We were doing comp help, and we will be doing comp help on weekends for all platforms. So if you'd like to come say hi, I'd love to see you there. But let's talk about Javelin 4 down below. What do you think about it? And please share any tips and strategy that you have. Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I'm Cool Guy.